Hot Springs Village Inside Out is a closer look at the greatness of Hot Springs Village, Arkansas and the surrounding areas, people, places, experiences. Hot Springs Village is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host Dennis Simpson as we engage in weekly conversations to explore Hot Springs Village Inside Out. Today's show is brought to you by Central Arkansas's favorite radio station, KVRE. Find them on the dial at 92.9 FM. Stream them live at kvre.com. Remax of Hot Springs Village. The award-winning Remax of Hot Springs Village is the largest real estate office inside the village with over 30 full-time agents and support staff. Visit them to learn more about this beautiful place to solve your real estate needs. Call them today at 1-800-364-9007. Find them online at explorehsv.com. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village at 1-800-364-9007 or online at explorehsv.com. Ike Eisenhower State Farm. Ike and his award-winning team have been serving the insurance needs of folks all around Hot Springs Village since 1998. Ike has qualified for State Farm's President's Club, Chairman's Circle, and Hot Springs Village Insurance Agent of the Year. Call Ike Eisenhower State Farm today at 501-984-4100. That's 501-984-4100. Find them online at IkeEisenhower.net. Call them today for all your insurance needs because, like a good neighbor, Ike Eisenhower State Farm is there. Well, I don't want to make it too big, but this is the three-time Dove Award winner, Mr. Jerry Sally, <laughs> that is joining us today. Jerry, how are you doing, brother? All right, buddy. How you been? I've been well. It's You know, I don't know that I've actually had anybody. Let me adjust myself here a minute, too. I don't know that I've had anybody on three times. And uh, so you're three times here, three times Dove, probably a, <laughs> probably a parallel there somewhere. I'm dying to know what it's like to win a Dove and much less with Miss Dolly Parton. Man, come on, tell the story. Well, that's the power of Dolly is what it is. I mean, <laughs> but, uh, an honor you know um it was in 2020 when we got the idea to do this record uh mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a group of folks there's three people that own a brand called country faith and it's a brand of gospel music and they've done country they do like the very first one was just called country faith and it did so well at cracker barrel that they did a country faith wedding songs and then they did a country faith gospel songs and or, or a southern gospel Right, right, right. And they did. They did all these different versions of country faith, different styles of music, and so they came to me since I'm running the Billy Blue Records thing, the Bluegrass label. Uh, they said they wanted to do a country faith bluegrass album, and so in order for any record, the different uh, organizations like the Grammys, um, the Doves, uh, the Bluegrass Awards, Country Music Association excuse me, they all have different rules on if you want to be eligible for a, a for a uh, an award, you can't just lease album, le lease album cuts. And so in the past, I don't know if it's making any sense or not, but in the past, for instance, the very first Country Faith album had, uh, they leased already recorded songs off of other albums. Like they took Carrie Underwood's Jesus Take the Wheel. And they took another gospel song or, or song of faith. Didn't have to be necessarily a gospel song, but it needed to be a song that related to faith some way right. or a good positive message song. Right. And so they were just all this time up until the bluegrass, uh, uh, up until the country faith bluegrass album, they had just been leasing these cuts off these recordings off all these other albums. Now, hang on one sec. So what I'm hearing in my mind is k -Tel Records presents... And, and they would always have a, a combination of all these kind of cool songs yeah. and they'd play 10 seconds of it. And what well, we saw those commercials as a kid and those were yeah. leased songs, right? That's correct. That's exactly right. So it's like a compilation of all these favorites, right. you know, in one place. Right. So, so they wanted, when they reached out to us to do the bluegrass record, 
we said, well, we could just, you know, find different leases and make an album or we could right. go in, we could record. I think it has to be 60 or 70 percent new material. I think it's well, at, back then it might have been. Yes, I think it was 50 or 60 percent new material. That means never recorded before songs and recordings. Mm -hmm. and then you could lease the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to be eligible for. Award. We wanted to be eligible for a Bluegrass Award. We wanted to be eligible for the Grammys. So we decided, or they asked me if I would produce uh, seven new songs, and then we would lease the rest of them for the album. So that's basically what we did. So I went in and I, uh, the Dolly Parton was one of the songs I got to record. She was so, oh, you talk about a sweetheart. She was so gracious and was so anxious to help and be a part of it any way she could be. And she basically gave me a vocal, it was just a vocal of her and a guitar singing the old hymn in the sweet by and by. And then, of course, with the technology we have today, I was able to take her vocal. I took that guitar off and built a music bluegrass around her vocal. And uh, once we got that part done, then uh, me and my friends, Larry Cordell, Carl Jackson and Bradley Walker, and I know you know Larry and Carl, um, we became kind of her background singers, you know, her harmony singers on the cut. And uh, it, yeah, it turned out. And uh, I've got to produce a song on her, um, a new song on Joe Mullins and the Radio Ramblers, one on Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver, uh, one on Darren and Brooke Aldridge. Um, I did a new one with Marty Rabin. We did a duet together on there. Yeah. And uh, one on the Steel Drivers. The Steel Drivers had never recorded a gospel song in their entire career until that album. So isn't really? that crazy? Well, and, and, then, I, yeah, I, and I know some background on the Steel Drivers. Uh, there used to be a member there. What was his name? Uh, Chris something? Yeah, Chris uh, Stapleton. Oh, Stapleton. Yeah, well, Stapleton, <laughs> yeah. Who, uh, he reminded me of Huey Lewis. Uh, Huey Lewis said it took him 15 years to be an overnight success. So, uh, yeah, yeah right. Mr. Stapleton, he paid his dues at other places, too. But I didn't realize that. Now, I want to come into the album real quick. And by the way, I think the irony of it is Diane and I picked up that album after I'd interviewed you one of the last times and we bought it at the Cracker Barrel in Nashville. Hmm. How about that? That's, a, yeah. That's the only place you can buy that. I, well, okay. Maybe all the other ones too, but somebody would ask, and it would be a fair question. Jerry Sally, what exactly do you do? Well, <laughs> it, depend, it depends on the day, doesn't it? It does depend on the day. This morning, <laughs> this morning I've been a record label guy taking care of a bunch of publishing information and, and then going through a, a record. I've been monitoring mixes. I've been going through mixes on a brand new album. I've signed this new act called Carson Peters and Iron Mountain. And Carson was actually on The Voice a few couple, three years ago. Yeah. I mean, he's a brilliant kid. He's only like 19 years old. Plays fiddle like nobody's business. Great out of bluegrass band out of east tennessee so today i've been going through his new mixes and making notes and sending them to the engineer to try to update those mixes to get that done and in addition to that trying to get all the publishing information you know to put out a project you have to have all the credits you have to have everybody that wrote the songs pushing information and so that you can license you know and pay everybody properly so i've been dealing with that all day long since about six o'clock this morning i've been working on Carson stuff so anyway um yeah well I've, <laughs> I've seen you all over facebook because you've been performing a lot of places too is one of the things and I, and it was a genuine question i know it is i mean you you have the music publishing side you've got the the, the and then you actually perform yourself where have you been and what have you been doing well the last weekend uh this is kind of this ties into the dolly stuff um in march of this year which i guess we're on the last day of march uh here we are. This March, this month was the 50th anniversary of Dolly writing and recording and releasing the song "I Will Always Love You." Everybody knows that big Dolly hit. Yeah, yeah. but you know, so, not everybody knows the story behind that story. What a oh my lord, what a story, I, I, right? Uh, it's a great story, but but uh, the 50th anniversary is was this month to celebrate that. At her theme park in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, uh, at Dollywood, they had song, a songwriter series. They had three songwriters, three guest songwriters, perform every single day for the month of March. And I was honored to be picked to be one of those songwriters. I performed uh, last Friday, a week ago today, Friday and Saturday over there. 
and had great shows, great crowds, great weather. It was really good over there last weekend. So, um, yeah, that, uh, we did that. And then um, I'm head, trying to think, oh, this coming, um, I played last night at the Glenn Campbell Museum here in Nashville for a private party there that mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to hear some songwriters perform. And then this coming Tuesday, I'll be performing at the world famous Bluebird Cafe. Um, there's an annual, it's a, it's an autism benefit that I do every year. And uh, I have a niece that's autistic. So we uh, try to support them all we can. And so this coming uh, Tuesday night, for any of you in tennis in Nashville area this coming week, um, it'll be April the 4th at 930 and um, or nine o'clock is our show. And uh, every penny will go to the to the autism benefit. And, and for those that don't know, the bottom line is, is that the Bluebird Cafe is the where to be found kind of place, you know. It um, is. It's, it's the place for songwriters. Yeah, that's where people go. And and every night you'll go hear people who have written hits for some of the biggest stars in country. Well, not just country music, gospel music and bluegrass and and you name it. You know, you're going to hear a, you're going to hear a song, you've not, you know, every night you go there. I'm just curious because I'm, I'm still stuck on the, the Dove Awards. Did you have any clue? Did you say, hey, we're we're one in ten, we're two in ten, we might have a good shot at this? Well, we were just getting nominated. You know, we made the the final the, the final nomination list is five. Mm. And we were up against Carrie Underwood. I mean, Carrie Underwood was, you know, and, and oh. of course my first thought was my first thought was I would do a record on not only the same year <laughs> Carrie Underwood decides to do a gospel record for the first time. <laughs> but uh so that i i really thought she had a you know probably had a pretty good chance of, of winning it as well but and uh I, this is no this is not fair to the other nominees because they were all worthy nominees but really carries the only one i can remember because well i, I mean she, that's the one know, everybody in the united states would know right yeah, right well, and I mean, so um you know i i just i i, I mean I'm, I'm being serious when i say it's the power of dolly you know there's just something that people love about her, um, that draws them to her. She's so real. Not that Carrie is the same. Dolly, man, Dolly still got it going on. <laughs> well, what, one, of, one of my favorite phrases of hers of all time, and, and you know, you see any interview, she's she's so personable, you can't re refuse her. Oh. Well, what, the, the best quote I think she ever did was, and she has some great one-liners, is that, you know, it costs a whole lot to look this cheap. I think that's one of the best. <laughs> that's one of the best ever. She, I mean, she she's so self-effacing to it. You know, hey, you know, I, I'm a country girl that grew up in the woods. You know, yeah, you know, no, that, no pretenses. Right, and I think that's why. I mean, she's just real. She's just real, and she's able to make fun of herself and and have fun. And I think that's what makes her such a the star that she is. You know, I really do. You know, I think part of it is I, I was talking to a, a friend, and this is this is at the Nazarene Church in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Okay, guy's a phenomenal pianist, phenomenal, and he's the music director. And I'm sitting here talking one day, and I said, you know, back in the day, we would go to the movies, and if it was a really good movie, they would hold it over, you know, held yeah. over for the third week. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. And and you watch the Gaithers or you know any of the Gaither specials or whatever, and they'll do the song, and then up. One more verse, and then they'll come back in and do the chorus or again or whatever. We can't do that anymore, Jerry. Not unless we program it into that little track machine <laughs> that plays the track so that our headsets can play the... Yeah. My point being, I think yeah. part of the world has become so... And we don't even know it in some ways. You, I doubt you've listened to a piece of radio in the last five years that hasn't been completely and meticulously engineered to the second. To the second. Yeah. Yeah. And and people don't even know that. And that's not a sin. Dolly right. is not engineered to the second. She's just Dolly. That's right. That's right. What you see is what you get. And uh, she's just about as, uh, you know, personable as, as, as it comes. There's nothing just about her. There's nothing, nothing pre-planned about her. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually hoping uh, I've got her Dove Award. She wasn't able to be there that night. I wasn't able to be there that night. And so... Um, I'm hoping it looks like I might get to go over and see her at her offices uh week after next to uh, actually oh, give, give her the hardware. <laughs> so that'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> hey, will, will, will we need to, will we need to uh, pull you down off cloud nine after that or what? You better believe it. Hoping to get some good pictures and I'll be plastering them everywhere. 
<laughs> well, you know, and, and, uh, and a lot of people don't know, and, and you you alluded to this one on one of the other shows one time, you know, in a digital world, I can cut a track, send it to you. You, I could be 5,000 miles away. And That's you true. literally, as you said, you literally stripped everything else away from that track and just took her voice and literally built a song around it. Is that fair? That's fair. That's exactly right. If you could listen to what she sent, she sent me um, this, it's this incredible vo vocal that had never been released. She had recorded the song before, but not this vocal. Of, mm -hmm. uh, the guitar, the guy guitar was a great guitar player, but it was a, what I would call a country rhythm. You know, mm -hmm. it was the way he played it. It wasn't bluegrass. It was just a country straight ahead mm -hmm. country feel. And so we were making a bluegrass record and I knew, you know, kind of what I wanted to do. And, um, I literally woke up in the middle of the night one night and I, I just sat right up and woke my wife up and I said, I just, I know what to do with this, with this. Cause I was thought, how can I make this different? And so I had this, this, I didn't really, well, maybe I did dream it, but it doesn't, it didn't seem like a dream. I just woke up with the idea and I wanted to start it off real slow, you know, and, uh, and this kind of the same, kind of the same, uh, uh, feel that they were doing it before but with a different instead with a finger picking style guitar instead of a, a rhythmic thing mm -hmm. and so and then but my idea was after the first chorus double time it double time the music because it was so slow that you could double time it and it was still kind of a slow thing yeah. and so uh, when i when i came up with that i knew that i'd finally figured out what to do and how to do it but uh, there was a lot of sleepless nights before that night <laughs> no, no, but but you're answering you're answering one of the questions and kind of coming back around to it. You know what exactly do you do? And in the joke for me and you both is depends on the day, right? But, but that said, I mean, uh, you know, what are you doing right now, Jerry? Well, it looks like I'm just sitting here on an interview with Dennis, but I'm really thinking about how I can make a bluegrass mode out of that <laughs> out of that track, you know. And and I can actually in my mind, I've worked enough with recording, I can hear just the vocal that you pulled out of that. And it's like yeah. butter. It's like butter. It's just this rich, rich, sweet tone. And and don't get me wrong. I have a clue. I, I know what, what can be done with digital technology these days. And I know what can't. And there's right. only so much you could have done to the vocal, but right. it's just masterful. I mean, you did a great, you, you deserved a dub for that, buddy. Well, thank you. I, I was, I'm really grateful and blessed to, to have experienced that. Um, I will tell you though, man, uh, my job, when you can work with somebody like Dolly, like you said, that vocal was like butter. Uh, I mean, you can't listen to that without getting tears in your eyes. Yeah. And when you, it made my job a whole lot easier when I had something like that to work with. <laughs> well, and, and to go back to once again, what do you do? Uh, when you're hanging out with that guy's name, uh, Core, yeah, that guy, yeah, yeah, Core, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I bought his uh, Leonard Skinner knockoff album, his Leonard Skinner. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, Leonard Skinner. I, I play that on our, my radio show on Saturdays and Sundays. People don't believe that's bluegrass. I'm like, whoa, 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 Skinner, baby. And they're, they're doing Freebird on banjos. And I'm like, this is so good. Yeah, it is. That's that's one of my favorite albums. Oh, of course, I, I did. I, yeah, three yeah. Steps, uh, uh, Curtis Lowe, uh, Freebird. I mean, you know, every song that you maybe have heard as a kid yeah. done in bluegrass, and it's rocking. I mean, it's really rocking. They, they 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 did a great job recording that record, and that'll go down. I, I, I that'll go down as one of his best recordings ever. I think. Oh, I don't <laughs> doubt that at all. I don't doubt that at all. Listen, buddy, I know you got to run, I, and we've been trying to catch up for a few weeks. I just wanted to have a few minutes with you, talk to you about the Dove and. I bet odds are I'm going to come back around and bug you again later. How about that? Well, you, you're welcome to reach out to me anytime, but it's always great to hear from you. And, uh, well, I see that beautiful background there. And I remember getting this to come over and play for y'all last, uh, September and, and staying on the lake. Wow. How beautiful is that? You're a blessed man, Dennis. Well, you too, my <laughs> friend, you too. And maybe it has to do with that. Don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. thing. maybe that has to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Most like that. <laughs> Most, I tell you what, I tell you what, we're going to leave the lake on for you. And when you're ready to come back by, we'll, we'll put you up a room. Okay. All uh, right. Sounds good, buddy. <laughs> Great seeing you, buddy. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks for watching and listening to Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a weekly podcast starring Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. Visit the website at hotspringsvillageinsideout.com.